Welcome to the Denimax 18 standard package. The standard package is for offices who want to be chartless but aren't ready to go totally paperless. Denimax is a point and click system with static windows that you can access through these buttons at the top of the screen. The standard package covers the patient list, the advanced scheduler, the patient chart screen, a quick way to add in clinical notes, perio charting, prescription writing, the ledger, the claim screen, the payment screen, and reports. The left hand side of the screen is your dynamic options menu that will change according to what you're trying to do in any screen and only give you the options that are relevant. You can find extra features under the mini toolbar here at the top of the screen under the list menu and activities menu. We do also have a built-in help menu in the top right corner of your screen in the question mark that will take you to help for the screen that you're in when you've selected it. Once you've opened a screen, you do have the ability here in the top left corner to go back to a previous screen, forward again, and we also have drop down menus that will show you the screens you have open below or above the one you're looking at so you can jump directly to that screen. If we jump to the home page using our home button, you'll see that the home page has different categories for helpful resources and quick links to other websites. This page is customizable, although we do have a lot of the standard information most practices would like to see here. Each staff member in the office can also have their own customizable home page, or you can set these up according to the different roles that people play in the office. These links are all buttons that will take you to a different part of the system or to run a particular report or link you up to a different website or video that you may find helpful. To begin our demo for the standard package, I'm going to go ahead and start by scheduling a new patient from our scheduler. You can also create a new patient from the patient information screen, but a lot of offices prefer to create a new patient appointment and when the patient shows up, then they go ahead and create their patient file and plug in all of the registration details that the patient has filled out. The scheduler is customizable and you can have as many or as few columns as you need to on your schedule. You can name your columns according to who's working that schedule. And you do have the option to set the time units for your schedule as well. I have my schedule set to 15 minute intervals as you can see here. You can also color code or template your schedule to mark people as being off, block out lunch hours, or schedule according to particular types of appointments that the doctor likes to see at certain times of day. For example, my doctor prefers to do root canals at the end of his day, so if they run over, he doesn't have to worry about having another patient to see. You can also create alternate views of the schedule with our Appointment Book Pro, and you can see I've got a couple examples here of how you can toggle between the alternate views on the schedule. This is a great option if you're on the cloud and you have multiple locations that you like to have one database for but have separate schedules for each location. You'll notice down here in the bottom right corner, we do also have little mini calendars. So we have a daily view of the schedule, a weekly view of the schedule, and a monthly view of the schedule as well that can help you schedule according to your needs a little bit faster. To make a new patient appointment, I can choose the time slot where I'd like to schedule my patient, go to my options menu and click add appointment, or I can simply double click wherever I'd like to schedule my patient. To begin, I'm gonna search for my patient by typing in the first three letters of their last name. Let's say I'm looking to see if George Clooney is an existing patient for us already. In the patient search field, I'm gonna type CLO for Clooney and GE for George and see if I have anyone listed in my patient database with the name George Clooney. The closest person I get is Alexander Cherry alphabetically to George Clooney, so I can clearly see that George does not exist in our system. I'm going to go ahead and take out his chart number from the patient search field and just enter his details here for last name and first name. You can move through these different fields by using your tab or enter button, and the system will format the phone number for you as you can see here. 
If you do sign up with our Dentamax texting service, once you enter a mobile number, you will have the option to click the little text messaging icon, which will pull up your texting service for that patient. You'll be able to immediately type out a text and welcome that patient to the practice. This is a great opportunity for you to send your new patient an introductory message via text to give them initial instructions and refer to in case they did not make a note on their calendar for their appointment, and it gives you an opportunity to verify their phone number. This text messaging center will also allow you to see all of the messages passed back and forth between you and George for future reference, including any automated appointment confirmations and reminders that go out. Going back to the appointment, you can color code the appointment according to what type of procedure the patient will be having. And we do have 20 colors in the system that you can choose from and customize. My new patient color is fuchsia, for example, so I'm gonna choose that and then indicate whether or not the patients confirm their appointment with me. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see what column I've scheduled the patient in, what provider I've scheduled the patient with, and also the time and length of their appointment, and you're able to enter in an email address if that's something you'd like to collect over the phone. In the note space of the appointment, you're able to enter any details pertaining to that date's appointment. For example, new patient, no issues to speak of, no allergies, looking to establish care. You can also place that patient on an ASAP list just by checking the box here, which is similar to a short call list, meaning the patient would like to be seen as soon as possible. Under your list menu, if you do get an opening in your schedule, you'll then be able to pull up your ASAP list and see who's requesting an appointment as soon as possible and be able to fill that time slot with ease. At the bottom of the screen, we have an option for you to put in service codes for the appointment. The service code is the procedure code that you'll plan to perform for that patient's appointment. In your options menu on the left, you have a section for service codes, and you can add each treatment item one at a time. If they were an existing patient, you'd also have the option right here to schedule from their treatment plan, and you also have the option to add the treatment items from a multi-code. Multi-codes are similar to explosion codes, or another term for them is combinations. You're able to customize and create as many multi-codes as you'd like, and they're different combinations of procedures that you might perform together frequently. In our system, each multi-code can accept up to 16 individual codes, and you can also assign tooth numbers, or default surfaces or even quadrants to those multi-codes. You can also assign default time units or length according to each multi-code. For example, my first button here, adult comp exam, four bite wings, pano, and a profi, is going to give me an hour in length for the appointment by default. This helps you do automated scheduling a little bit faster. You can then see at the bottom of the appointment, you have your appointment total for that patient in case they don't have insurance and you're able to give them an estimate right out of the gate. We do have a few other options I wanna point out on this appointment entry screen. If you do sign up with one of our clearinghouse partners and choose to opt in for the real-time eligibility, you'll have the option to check the patient's eligibility from their insurance right from here. We also have the option in our options menu to show additional information, which gives you the space to add in the patient's street address if you'd like to mail them paperwork ahead of time and even track the referral source and how that patient found you. Any details you add to that new patient appointment will carry over onto that patient's information screen when you activate their patient file. I'm gonna go ahead and save my changes, which you can click the save button or hit F3 on your keyboard. Now we have our new patient appointment on the schedule, and you can see George Clooney is scheduled at one o'clock. The icon here with the blue piece of paper is what's telling me that this is a new patient who still needs to get registered into our system. You can see that the red person here is indicating that the appointment is unconfirmed as of now. The note icon on the appointment will actually pull up that patient's appointment notes when you click on it, and you can modify them right from here outside of opening that appointment up and adding more notes to it. 
You will notice that there is a few lines of information that you can see displayed on the appointment just by looking at it. But if you take your cursor and hover over the appointment, you're also able to see any additional information that you have set as a default to show on every appointment. In some instances, you'll be able to see a patient photo if there's one on file already for that patient simply by hovering over the appointment. When you're ready to go ahead and mark that the patient has confirmed the appointment or they're here for the appointment, you'll simply left click on the appointment to select it, in which case you'll see this blue halo around the appointment, and then right click for additional options, just like a Microsoft Word program. If you go to change status, you'll have a number of options here to choose from and mark the option that fits. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say this patient is ready to be seen which changes your icon from red to green. That tells your assistant or the hygienist that they have the green go light to go ahead and get that patient seated in the chair. From this point, I'm gonna create their patient file or activate that patient by going to the options menu on the left and clicking create the patient file. Or once again, we can right click for additional options to that appointment and hit create the patient file from there. When you create that patient's file, it pulls all the data from their appointment onto their patient information screen and assigns the patient a chart number. On the patient profile, you're able to fill in any gaps in information that you didn't capture over the phone. For example, nicknames, any addresses, gender, marital status, birthdays, etc. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in a few pieces of information here. Our system will skip past the city and state and if you put in a zip code it's familiar with, it'll autofill the city and state for you. And once again, you can use your tab or enter buttons or the mouse to move through these different fields. If the patient's going to be a hygiene patient, you can go ahead and mark use recall for that patient or have that set as the default if the majority of your patients will be recall patients. And then you can choose the recall frequency here according to how often they should be seen. You can also manually set the next recall date for the patient if they're not being seen yet because they're not due quite yet for hygiene, but it's gonna be a number of months out. That will ensure that the patient doesn't get lost out of your recall system if they were never part of it to begin with. The notes from the appointment do carry over into the patient note space, and you can keep those there if they're relevant or take them out for other types of notes that you may wanna add here. Anything that you'd like to have become part of a pop-up when you open that patient record, you can type free form into the alert space. You can even right click and change the font size and color if it's something super important that you want to stand out. And then anything that's a medical alert or a medication, you can add to the medical alerts tab. For example, if the patient has arthritis, and diabetes. You can see the date last updated and that carries over into the patient's chart screen as well to verify how current their medical alerts are. You can also add medications in here. Perhaps he's taking metformin for his diabetes and you can plug in a date that prescription was entered or the date the patient started taking it if they happen to know that as well. Going back to the tab for patient information, you can see that the appointment is listed here on that patient profile, and that is a hyperlink to, and we do have a lot of hyperlinks built in throughout our software. So if we double click on the appointment, you can see that it takes us right to that patient's appointment on the schedule. I can then use my back button here in the top left corner to navigate back to their patient information screen and continue on. We're able to fill in some other gaps here for assigned hygienist, student status, employer if applicable, what facility the patient might belong to, or if you have multiple locations, which location they should be seen at, and other billing options. If they had any family members in the system we could link them to, you'll also see any family members' names here, which would be hyperlinks as well. And there's a few options at the top of the screen to mark the patient deceased, VIP for hiding contact details from certain temporary staff members, and not a patient if the person is just in your system for billing purposes. You'll also be able to see any missed appointments the patient has had, when their eligibility was last checked through one of our partners, and any lab cases that the patient has pending. 
You are also able to acquire a patient picture if you have a webcam or a capture device connected to the computer, or you can load a patient picture if the patient has emailed you one or you've downloaded one from somewhere else. For example, we've got a picture here of George Clooney that I'll load up and add to his patient information screen. And when we save our changes and go back to the appointment, when you hover over the appointment, we now get the pop-up with George's photo inside of it. I'm just gonna jump back once more to his patient information screen. And you'll see because we added some medical alerts and other alerts, you get those in a pop-up anytime you try and activate a screen for that patient. We'll go ahead and click OK after reviewing. And then we can move on to the next tab over here at the top under extra information. The extra tab is something that is customizable inside of the standard package and any other package higher than the standard package. So you'll notice here that we have a few random pieces of information. You are actually able to right click on these fields and rename them. For example, the patient's preferred pharmacy might be something that you wanna track here and have a designated space for. This could be the pharmacy phone number. This could be preferred scheduling times. So you're able to customize this according to what you prefer and what the office needs are. You do also have a space for emergency contact information. And once again, you're able to see referral sources or choose those from here down at the bottom. The custom tab acts very much the same as the extra fields. You are able to right click and rename these for an additional 40 spaces to customize. Lastly, we have a tab for missing teeth here where you're able to mark any missing teeth ahead of time that the patient might have. If you happen to get a Pano or an FMX from a referring provider that gives you that information. If you do mark missing teeth here, those will carry over into the patient's chart screen and vice versa. I'm gonna jump backwards and get into our insurance information and show you a brief overview of how this section works. You do have a space for primary insurance and secondary insurance, and you can check whether or not the assignment of benefits comes to your office or if it should get paid to the patient. You simply choose here under primary insurance what the relationship to the subscriber is. So if the patient is the subscriber, you would choose self, and therefore it populates the subscriber for you. And then you can pick which insurance plan the patient has. If the patient has MetLife, for example, I can start typing in MET for MetLife, and the system will take me down through my list to the MetLife plans. We can see we've got a couple MetLife plans on file with Dentamax, Here's a group number, another one with Dentamax with a different group number. We've also got drive time up here as well. If the patient has MetLife with drive time and the group number matches, you can simply select that, fill in their subscriber ID number, and save your changes. If the patient has MetLife and it's not a plan listed here, what you're gonna do is click the magnifying glass to the right to open the master list of the insurance plans and do a deeper search or add a new plan. Anytime you see the magnifying glass on the right, that helps you do a more in-depth search. So when I click that search window, I'm able to search here under company name, for example, or perhaps even group number if we happen to have that on file or employer. Please keep in mind that the ways you search in a screen is totally customizable and that can be set up per computer or per user by clicking Customize Filter. Your filter is how you search on any given screen. And you can see we have a number of options according to the screen that you're in. You can also customize your view on any given screen by clicking the Customize View option and moving an item from the left-hand side of the screen to the right or vice versa. So for example, our available fields show us that we have group name as an available option or group number. I'm gonna go ahead and choose group number and move that over to the right into our viewed fields. And then also on my insurance plan list screen, I'd like to see the phone number for that insurance company. So I'm gonna select that and add that over to the right as well. Click OK and now suddenly you can see the group number and the phone number for that insurance company. 
you can reorder where these fields go to. So if you'd like your setup in a certain order, you can. And once again, each staff member in the office or each computer can set up their custom viewing custom filter differently. So according to that person's needs, they can see as much or as little on the screen as they need to. Almost every one of our screens in the system is able to be customized in these ways. Let's say George has met life through Universal Studios. I'm going to go ahead and add employer to this screen as well so we can see if we've got that option. And so the only MetLife plans that I do have do not relate to Universal Studios. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of one of these existing insurance plans by selecting it and hitting copy this plan to create a brand new MetLife plan that I'm then able to customize to Universal Studios plan. So here's my new plan. I'm simply going to click Edit Insurance Plan. Group name is going to be Universal Studios. I could add the employer as well, which may be the same Universal Studios. And then group number is the most important thing here. Our system will allow you to select what fee schedule you want to show up on that patient's ledger, which is also the fee schedule that the system will calculate what the patient portion is according to your contracted fees. We then alternatively have a different fee schedule that's allowed to be used on the claim form itself. So you're still billing out your full UCR fees to every insurance company but you're only billing the patient the contracted and agreed upon MetLife fees. In the bottom of the screen, you do have a space for any general notes about this plan. For example, ortho coverage up to age 18, lifetime max paid quarterly. You can also put in age limits and missing tooth clauses, for example and any other frequency and limitation info you'd like to add here. That information does carry over into a few different parts of the system, so it's handy to have that filled in into the note space. You are also able to create medical insurance plans. Jumping up to the top of the screen, I do wanna point out we have a tab for coverage information where you're able to fill in any deductibles for that patient's plan when their plan renews and what their annual maximum is, as well as change any covered percentages here according to what their plan allows. The next tab over is to store payment history or payment information, which you can manually add in payment history for a particular code from this insurance group, or you can automatically update that when you receive the EOB in and you're posting your check. The next tab at the top is for frequency details. This allows you to add in any given code that's related to hygiene and put in what the frequency allowance is for that code, which carries over into our recall screen. When we're done adding any frequency notes and limitations to this plan, we can go ahead and save our changes. For any of you doing medical billing, I do want to point out that you have the option to mark whether or not this is a medical insurance plan, and you also have the option to choose whether you're doing ICD-9 or ICD-10 billing to that medical insurance plan. You can also do ICD-9 or 10 billing through the dental insurance plans as well and have that diagnosis code follow you over to the patient's claim form for easy claim submission as well. I'm going to go ahead and save our changes and now we have a brand new plan with MetLife for Universal Studios with this group number that I can then select for this patient's insurance. Now that we're done with the patient information screen, I'm going to go ahead and save our changes. Every patient has a patient journal, which you can access through any part in the software. As long as you have your patient selected and click F11, you're able to pull up that patient's journal. The journal lets you add any general contact notes or entries about treatment plans, financial agreements, anything that's relevant that the whole staff may wanna look at. So I can create a new note with today's date automatically added and with a title and just comment here that I scheduled a new patient appointment, sent welcome text, 
and ask patient to arrive early and save my note. Later, that note can be searchable by date range, by keyword, or by the user who made the note. Please keep in mind that other relevant applications of these notes could be that you've left messages for the patient to schedule recall or to schedule their treatment plan. It could be any discussions that you've had with that patient's insurance. It could be any financial arrangements that you've agreed to with that patient. There's a wide range of applicable usages for this patient journal in your system. So now that the patient profile, the insurance, and the schedule is done for that patient, we're gonna go ahead and get into the patient's charting. Since the appointment's still selected here, I can go to the chart by clicking View Chart from the Options menu, right-click and go to View Chart from the appointment, or at the top of the screen, simply click the Chart button since that patient's already pre-chosen. Once again, we get our medical alert pop-up, and you can see in the patient's chart screen that they are already missing tooth number one and two since I did mark those missing on our patient information screen. Aside from marking missing teeth from the patient information screen, you can also go to your conditions menu here on the left. And that first button that you see here when you hover over is a missing tooth button. When you hover over any of the buttons, you will get a pop-up describing what each button does or what code each button is tied to. So we'll simply select the missing tooth button and go ahead and mark any other missing teeth in the patient's mouth. If you do also need to change some dentition in the patient's mouth, please note it does default according to the patient's date of birth and the settings in the system, but you can simply right click on a tooth and mark it as a primary tooth or right click in the mouth and change all to primary, all to permanent or all to mixed dentition. We do have different tabs here in the center of the screen once again, that let you click through and work on whatever's relevant in that moment. I've also dragged a few tabs from the middle of the screen to the right half of the screen so we can see more as we work. The chart screen function has a view mode and an entry mode. The view mode is gonna dictate what you're seeing on the screen. So I've just hidden my treatment plan and my conditions. I can bring those back and hide any declined or referred out items or existing restorations if I'd like. So you're able to toggle very quickly to display what you'd like to see. And it is also color coded. So you can change the colors that are associated with the statuses on the screen. For example, we can make our conditions gray and our treatment plan red. You then also have an entry mode on your screen, which is going to dictate what you're entering into the patient's odontogram. So you are able to enter either a planned item, what you've completed today, or any existing restorations the patient might have. You can choose your entry mode, and then you can also choose what provider has done the existing restorations, which some offices will add a provider called other if it were done outside of their office or you can choose what provider is actually doing the charting as well. Once you've selected your view mode and your entry mode and your provider, you can then go to your options menu on the left to the mini customizable menus. We do have a section here for preventative and diagnostic items to chart any existing exams or sealants that the patient might have. We also have restorative slash pedo for amalgams, composites, buildups, crowns, endoperio and surgery for root canals and extractions, perio maintenance, debridements, and then of course fixed and removable prosthetics for any bridges or partials or dentures as well as other services that you may use at random. And then again, the conditions menu is to chart any issues in the patient's mouth. All of these menus are customizable from the order that you have the menus in to the order that you have the buttons in to the picture on the button or even the display name when you hover over the button. You can also edit what code that button is attached to if the code changes the following year to a different procedure number. You can also add or remove buttons, add or rename or remove the menus, and you can have multiple menus for different providers with their preferences if you'd like. 
To get started, we're going to go ahead and chart some existing restorations, which I've color coded to be lime green in our system. And let's suppose that the patient has some existing amalgam fillings. An amalgam is a restorative treatment, so we'll go to the restorative menu. And when we hover over the buttons, you can see that the first button that looks like a filling is an amalgam. So I'm going to select that button and simply click the surfaces of the tooth that have an existing amalgam restoration. When you hover over the surfaces of the tooth, you can see that it highlights blue to show you where you're about to add the filling. Let's say the patient also has an MOD amalgam on tooth number 19. I simply hover and click where I'd like to add it. If you find that you've made a mistake and added a, a procedure where you don't need it, you simply click it again to take it off. At the bottom below the odontogram, you can see in coded format the procedure codes, the description, the tooth number, and the surfaces that I've added as existing restorations so far. Let's suppose the patient also has a post and core buildup and a crown on tooth number three. I can go back to my options menu on the left under restorative, find the post and core button, select that, click on tooth three, and then find the appropriate type of crown that the patient may have, select that button, and click on tooth number three once again. One of the great things about our charting screen, aside from its customization, is that you are able to use your multi-code buttons to treatment plan or chart in the patient's chart screen. For example, this button is for a root canal, a crown, a buildup, and a seat. So if I select that button and click on tooth number 30, it's gonna add all of those procedures as existing restorations with just one click. This is why Denimax refers to the charting screen as speed charting. You can also create buttons that have default surfaces selected. For example, MOD is a very popular filling. So you may have a button for an MOD filling instead of having to click the individual surfaces of the MOD on any given tooth. Now that we've got our existing restorations done, let's go ahead and make our treatment plan for the patient. So I'm gonna change my entry mode to say we're planning now, and we're gonna to plan to perhaps extract tooth number 15 and 31, and we're gonna to plan to put in a couple implants and crowns on tooth number two and tooth number 18. An implant falls under our fixed and removable prosthetics, so here's our surgical placement of implant. I click the button, click in the tooth space, implant abutment, an implant crown. And now I've got a treatment plan here for tooth two for placement of implant, implant abutment, and implant crown. Once again, you can create multi-code buttons according to the multi-codes you have in the system. So if I right click under the multi-code menu, click add a code, skip past the individual code, and choose the multi-code that I'd like to use. For example, implant abutment crown, I'm then able to click on the image and select an image that I feel best represents an implant abutment with crown. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this button by double clicking on it and save my changes. Now I have a button for an implant abutment and crown which is displayed to me when I hover over that. I can simply click on that and click in the space where tooth number 18 would be and it immediately adds my implant, my abutment and my crown to the treatment plan with one click instead of the three clicks it took to do tooth number two. Now that we've got our treatment plan on the screen, if we wanna focus on that, we can go ahead and hide our other options in the view mode. And let's say we're gonna refer out the implant placement for tooth number two and number 18. I can hold my control button down and select those two procedures. I can right click and mark them referred out. Once I mark them referred out, I can choose which provider I'm sending them to and simply click refer charges. Now they're no longer under my planned items, but under my referred out items, which I can see here. You are also able to double click on either of those procedures and see who you referred that item to and the date you referred it out. There are also reports in our system that will show you what you've referred out to whom and when as well. I'm gonna go back to our treatment plan and now that we've referred those items out, 
I'm gonna say appointment number one for this patient is going to be the placement or the impression for the implant abutment. So I highlight those two items and type a one on my keyboard. So under order, those are appointment number one. And then appointment number two is going to be the impression for the implant crown. So I highlight and type a two. And then appointment number three would be for the crown seating. Now the front desk is going to be able to see the items that the patient needs and schedule according to the order that you've laid out when they go to make the patient's next appointment. You can also go over to the treatment estimate screen here in our options menu to get a sense of what type of fees the patient may be looking at. I can hide any recall items simply by unclicking the box that says show recall codes and focus in on just the restorative treatment plan items we've got here. If I'd like to print an estimate just for appointment number one, I can hold my control button down and select both of the items and click print estimate of selected items instead of printing out the whole estimate. We do have a number of different types of treatment plan estimates depending on whether or not you like to show your office fee on that treatment plan estimate in addition to the insurance's contracted fee. Here's an example of one treatment plan report for you to see. It shows the order of the procedures, tooth number, what the plan is, what the contracted or allowed fee is, how much the insurance pays of that, and what the patient portion is. The asterisk denotes a deductible applied to one of the items. If we scroll down, you can see the grand total for that patient's treatment plan and deductibles, as well as a disclaimer and a space for a signature. If we go to click Print Estimate, we're able to choose an alternative option and see the whole treatment plan, including recall items if you'd like, and where the deductible may fall according to those items. You can see some of my items don't have office fees associated, which is why those are showing up blank. At the bottom, you can see the total fee, deductible, insurance estimate, and patient estimate, once again with a space for a signature. If we did want to check out the insurance details for that patient, there is the note sheet here which pulls up the frequency and limitation notes that we added to the insurance plan, or you can simply click on the word MetLife to open up the full insurance plan for that patient and review coverage details, payment history, and any frequency and limitation notes that might be on file. You can also see a snapshot of how much they've used out of their insurance plus what's pending out of what their insurance maximum is. So you can see we haven't estimated the patient has used anything with us quite yet. We're gonna post a few items here and mark them complete in a few minutes, but I wanna run through the different tabs that are available to you in this screen as well. The images tab lets you add or acquire an image again from an image file. If you have an image file saved somewhere, which could for example be a patient photo with a date and a note, or it could be a referral letter from another provider that you add in as well. You do have the option to capture some images here, but please keep in mind this has limited storage space and it's just a way to view those images inside the chart screen quickly. The treatment plan tab will actually let you name your treatment plan. So for example, I'm gonna call this treatment plan option implant. And you can also create multiple alternative treatment plan options. For example, if we are going to choose to do a partial instead of an implant, we can set the system up to allow for a partial treatment plan versus our implant treatment plan. You can also set one of the plans as a default plan as soon as the patient decides which route they'd like to go. The Alerts tab lets you review any medical alerts and when those were last updated, it allows you to modify the medical alerts as well, medications, and any general alerts that you have on file. The Notes tab that I've moved to the right of the screen is for any general notes, such as patients taking flying lessons, if you'd like to have certain talking points on file or any notes about what their discussion was with you regarding their treatment plan, or perhaps even that the patient prefers to have a pillow when they're seen. The clinical notes tab 
is for adding your official procedure notes to the system. You have a couple of ways of accomplishing this. Number one is by clicking add line and typing out a free form note. You can tag each note with a tooth number if relevant or even a short sequence of letters that may mean something to you. For example, TX could refer to a note about the patient's future treatment plan that you've made. Later, the tooth number space or the user code can become a filter to search for your notes. The alternative for adding clinical notes is to click Add Note, choose a category of notes. For example, under Routine, we have a Profi note. I'll select that. And this is one of the templates that we have in the system for you to use. Our templates are totally customizable from start to finish. You can change the formatting on the template so it's in paragraphical or narrative mode versus line item mode. You can change the questions that are being answered inside the template. You can change your answer options. And you can also change the font, the color, and the sizing of the template as well. This is something we'll teach you how to do in one of your training sessions. The template itself is going to be listed on the left hand side of the screen and your question and answer options are going to be on the right half of the screen. Anytime you come upon a question number, for example number 21 next to an arrow, that tells you to look right. So medical history reviewed and updated, perio charting has been completed, yes, no, or not applicable. We look to the right and double click on the answer we choose to select. Let's go ahead and say yes by double clicking and then the system moves on to the next question. Did you ultrasonic or hand scale? Let's suppose we did both today. Then we move on to calculus and you can rate the degree of calculus. We'll say it's moderate, plaque is mild, bleeding is mild to moderate, we polished and flossed their teeth, gave them oral hygiene instruction, and their next visit should be six month recall or continuing their treatment plan, etc. Once you're done clicking through that template, you can immediately add or take out anything you'd like to, and then save your note. You can once again tag that with a tooth number or a little indicator, P for Profi in this case. And you can still make changes to the note up until 10 days after that note was created. At the 10 day mark, the note will automatically lock down and no one will be able to edit it at that point forward. You can lock the note sooner if you'd like simply by clicking the lock button to permanently lock the note. And if you should lock the note and need to make a change to it later, you can click add line and backdate your note or amendment to the date that the original note occurred. You can also create buttons that are linked to your procedure codes and clinical notes so that when you select a button and mark it as a completed item or a planned item, that clinical note template will automatically pop up for you to complete. The next tab over is for x-ray images. And for those of you who have Dentamax imaging in addition to your Dentamax practice management, you'll be able to see your x-rays right here embedded in the chart screen. You can filter those by tooth number or by date if you do have both our imaging software and our practice management. Here's an example of what that looks like. You are able to blow up the images inside the patient's chart screen from the thumbnails that you'll have captured here for easy access and viewing of your images without having to go to another software. Next, what I'd like to do is go ahead and create a perio exam for this patient. So we have a couple of options on how to get there. One of the ways we can go to perio exams is by going to the options menu on the left and clicking new perio exam to start a new one immediately. The alternative is to click the perio screen here at the top and then review any existing exams we may have on file and then click new perio exam. So if you need to preview or maybe copy from a previous perio exam, you'll want to go to the perio screen first. If you're ready to dive in and just do a new exam, then you're welcome to go ahead and just click that button. You'll notice here in the perio screen that all of the teeth that we've marked missing are already out of the patient's mouth here on the perio screen. 
We do have a few different movement patterns on how you can do your perio charting and your options are here in the top right corner. The default is gonna be to do the buckle from number one to 16 and then drop down and do the lingual from 16 back to one and then drop down to the lower arch with the same movement pattern. This screen very much works like a grid. So we have the different items of measurement here on the left. So PD stands for probing depth. GM is our gingival margin. CAL is clinical attachment level. MGD is for a mucogingival defect. Bone loss, mobility, and plaque for each tooth. So you're able to chart all of that per tooth. And you'll have the option to chart for cation here in the middle of the tooth. On the lingual side, you'll have the option for probing depth, gingival margin, and clinical attachment level. You'll notice the options in this screen are here in the center between the upper arch and the lower arch. So right now we're set to start tracking probing depths. All I need to do is click my starting point and begin typing in the probing depths for that patient. Please note that our system does work with other voice activated systems such as Dragon or Say It or perhaps other programs out there on the market. It does also work with the Dental Wrap program, which is a foot pedal, and may work with other accessory items that can help you do probing points very quickly. If there is a bleeding point in the patient's mouth, you can either click the B on your keyboard or you can use the checkbox here for bleeding in the center of the screen, or we do also have a virtual keyboard, which is here on the right hand side of the screen that you're able to use as well if you prefer. The S represents superation or pus in the patient's mouth and it'll turn that box yellow as opposed to red for bleeding. And then you can do B and S for a particular pocket which shows this maroonish color for bleeding and superation. You'll notice that any number above a three is gonna automatically be red to give you that visual warning that the patient's probing depths are not where we'd like them to be. Once you're done charting the probing depths, you can go ahead and switch over to the gingival margin, click your starting point once again, and begin charting the gingival margin for the patient. Please keep in mind that the gingival margin and the probing depth combined will automatically calculate the clinical attachment level for you, saving you some steps on this screen. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and switch over to mark any furcations for teeth that may perhaps have some, and it will show the furcation reading in the center of the tooth. You can also track the plaque, the mobility, or bone loss for that tooth as well. So that tooth number three that's highlighted in blue is the tooth that I'm making all of those changes to. If there is a mucogingival defect, all you have to do is simply click the little checkbox for MGD. At the bottom of this screen, you do have a note space. So if you're planning to send this perio exam to another specialist or another dentist, you can make a little note for them if you feel that's necessary. Once you're done with the exam, simply save your changes from your options menu on the left, and now you have an exam on file. If you need to, you can go back into that exam or while you had it open and print the exam out for the patient's reference or to send over to another dentist or view it in a graphical format as well. If you do choose to view the graphical format and you have multiple exam dates here, you'll be able to toggle to select how many exams you'd like to compare against the other. Another great feature of our perio exams is I can click new perio exam and actually copy from a previous existing exam and choose which date I want to copy from and then simply spot probe and update my readings where necessary and save that as a totally separate exam on file from the original exam. Next what I want to do is go ahead and complete the items from today's appointment. To do so, I'm gonna go to the Post Transactions button in our Options menu, and we're able to see the full treatment plan that the patient has. I'm gonna go ahead and select what we did do out of what we had planned to do today. Once I've selected all of the relevant items, I'm gonna go ahead and click Post Selected from my Options menu on the left. 
Please keep in mind that you do not have to do this from the chart screen. The front desk staff is also able to do this directly on the schedule or even from the patient's ledger. Once we posted those items, I'm going to go ahead and show you that they're here under our completed view mode. And we could go to the patient's ledger and see that those charges are sitting here as completed as well. Now that the patient's appointment is over, we can right click on the appointment and change it to a completed appointment. And if we hadn't posted charges already, that would give us an opportunity to go ahead and mark what we did complete for the day. Since we've already done that, I'm going to go ahead to the patient's account and collect their patient portion for the day. So I can either right click and go to view ledger or in my options menu, click view ledger or once again at the top of the screen, click on the ledger button. When we open the patient's ledger, you can see here at the top that the patient does have MetLife insurance. And if you click the words MetLife, that is a hyperlink to open up the full plan details of their MetLife insurance. The note sheet next to it is also the frequency and limitation notes that we've added into that patient's plan for quick reference. You can see here out of the total of $113 charged that we're anticipating MetLife to pay that full $113. What this tells me is that those items are marked as being paid at 100% with no deductible applied to them. If you do need to look a little deeper into the patient's account, you can go to the head of household, which is who's responsible for paying the bill for the account. This happens to be the same as the patient, so that's a hyperlink to that patient's information screen. Or you can also click on the patient's name, George Clooney, which will also take you to their patient information screen for a bit more information. Aside from who you're billing and the total charges, we do also have an insurance snapshot box here in the top right corner of the screen where you're able to see any remaining deductibles, how much we estimate the patient has used out of what their annual maximum is, as well as take a look at secondary insurance if any is on file for that patient. You have a number of filter options here to show a whole family account or just the patient you're on, hide zero balance items, and look at a summary or a detailed view of the ledger as well. If you'll notice here, we, we can see each individual transaction, the date of the charge, and the amount we're billing per item. We can also see that there's no patient payments or adjustments made yet, no insurance payments or adjustments yet, no claims created, and what the current balance is. Some offices may choose to start by creating the patient claim, which we can click Create Claim from the Options menu per patient individually, or at the end of the day, go to the Claim screen and create the claim from there. Since the patient doesn't have an estimated patient portion, we can go ahead and submit the claim and then wait for the insurance payment to come back. Let's just go ahead to our Claim screen next and submit our insurance claim. Here at the top of the screen, I'm simply going to click Claims List. And if you'd like to, you can generate claims in bulk at the end of the day by clicking Create Claims. Here's our claim for George Clooney, which we can see is going to MetLife. You can go ahead and click the plus sign here next to the claim line, which will show you all of the charges associated with that patient's claim. If by chance there's something that you did want to remove from the claim, you can double click on the claim line and open it up, simply select the item, right click and hit remove from claim. That will take the item off of the claim form before you submit it to the insurance company. Our claim form is interactive, so you are able to click and type anywhere you'd like to to add a narrative and make any necessary changes directly to that claim record. Once you're done, go ahead and save your changes and that claim says it's ready to be billed out. If you do sign up with a clearinghouse to send electronic claims through, we have a couple partners that we work with, either Apex or Dental Exchange. And if you do have the integration with them turned on, you're able to simply click Send eClaims in order to send the claims out to either Apex or Dental Exchange. If you prefer to print your claims and mail them, you can simply click Print Claims and print out the whole claims batch 
for the claims that are ready to be billed out. You can also choose to send or print claims individually by choosing the print selected claim or send selected e-claim, and anything you have highlighted will go out when you click that button. Let's go ahead and say I've submitted my claim for George Clooney. The claim now shows it's been billed out and we're simply waiting for payment to come back in for that patient. Let's suppose a week goes by and we receive our payment in. We can simply pull open that patient's ledger once again and we can get there from choosing the patient on the schedule or what's more likely is to go to your patient list Pull up George Clooney from here and click on Ledger. You can also simply open the ledger and then choose your patient chart number if you prefer. Since we've submitted the claim, we can now see a claim number assigned to the items that we did send out. And let's go ahead and post our insurance check. We're going to go to the Options menu on the left and click New Insurance Payment. Plug in our insurance check number and the amount that they paid us. We're gonna go ahead and hit distribute and this takes us to our EOB entry screen. You've got a lot of hyperlinks here to choose from and you also have a bit of information in the top right corner of the screen to show you the total check amount and that you have or have not posted any of that check quite yet. This screen reads exactly like an EOB so you can see the date of service a claim number, the code, what you've charged out, and then you also get to see the balance per item and what we estimated the insurance to pay. Let's go ahead and suppose that the insurance did pay us $30 for the D1110, $19 for the D0274, and then they paid us $33 for the D0150. Perhaps we made the mistake of underbilling the insurance company and they caught that and submitted their full payment to us regardless. The system is able to automatically adjust that item up so that you're able to absorb that full $33 payment that you've received. You also get a green dot here which indicates that you've been paid differently than what our system was expecting, which was the $24. You can update the payment history on file for future reference simply by clicking the green dot and saying yes to update the future expected payment amount. You can also add a note to that item if you want to explain what the adjustment's for by clicking in the note box on that line item, saying yes to create a billing note, choosing a note code, and simply adding your description. You can choose whether or not to print that note on the patient's statement if you'd like to provide them with an explanation. And then simply save your changes. You can see here at the top of the screen that we've received a check for 82 and currently we have posted 82 as it's applied down below. So unposted is zero. We can go ahead and post our payments and close our screen therefore marking one claim as paid, which takes it off of the insurance aging report, and we can see that we applied and distributed 82 of the 82. Now that I have marked to hide zero balance items, you can see the only item left we can currently see on the ledger is for $40 because it still has the balance of 40. If you'd like to see the other items, we can simply unclick hide zero balance and see the rest of the items listed here. You do also have the option to look at the detailed view of the charges where you see the insurance check payment. And when you hover over that line, it shows you that this $19 is a portion of the $82 check that was paid in full. Now we have a balance of $40 left over since I removed that item from the claim and I wanna go ahead and bill the patient for that amount. Let's suppose we happen to know that the patient had a pano in recent history and that's why we didn't want to bill for it again. We can double click this item and mark do not bill insurance for it so that it's never going to show up on a claim for that patient if we should create claims once again in the future. And then we can simply go down to print a statement out for the patient to mail them for their balance. The patient statement's only going to show the items that the patient has a balance for, 
given the type of statement we've chosen. We do have three different statements to choose from in our system, depending on what suits your needs best, and we'll review this with you in a training session. Here's the one charge that's still pending or outstanding with the balance for $40. We can see that there's been no insurance payments or adjustments, no patient payments or adjustments so far, so the balance left over is $40, and that's what we're asking the patient to pay. Let's go ahead and suppose that the patient called us to submit their payment. We can simply go to the enter a payment section on their ledger and click add a patient payment slash adjustment. Choose the method that they're paying with and then click pay this amount if they're paying the full amount that's the patient estimate due or plug in the amount that they are paying us if it's different. That payment will automatically get applied to the oldest item first on that patient's account that still has a balance remaining. You can move the distribution of payment if there are multiple charges and you want to pay off a specific item at the patient's request. In this case, since we only have one charge, I'm going to go ahead and say we've collected the full amount due by clicking pay this amount for $40 and that $40 automatically gets applied to the line item and we save our changes. Now next to the panoramic x-ray, you can see we billed $40 and the patient has paid $40, therefore leaving the account balance at zero. At the end of the day, we want to run a day sheet to reconcile and verify all the charges, all the payments, and all the adjustments that we've received. So I'm going to go to the report screen and take a look at a few key reports. Reports can be run from the home page or from different screens as you move through them, but all the reports are stored under the report screen. One of my favorite features about Denimax is that we have a keyword search space here at the top of the report screen. So if I'm looking for a day sheet, I can simply type the word day and find any and all reports related to anything that might be relevant to a daily report. Here's our day sheet, or we have a day sheet by provider or a summary. So we have a number of different variations of different reports and at the bottom half of the screen you can see a sampling of what that report looks like and the data it gives you when you select it on the top half of the screen. Therefore honing in on what the differences are between the reports before you decide to run one. Here's our standard day sheet so I'm going to double click on it to run it. Plug in my date range for today. Click the OK button and preview the day sheet for today. Here's the charges we've posted, the payments that we've received from insurance, and any adjustments and patient payments as well. At the end of the day sheet, you'll see a total section for your production, totals for your adjustment, and totals for your collection, or perhaps even any refunds you've done. You can see total accounts receivable, which is your difference between any production and collection and adjustments that may have occurred in the date range you've specified. You can also see the total amount billed to insurance, number of procedures, and average amount of charge. We do also have a report programmer in-house that's able to modify or create new reports for you if there is something that you'd like to add or change about any of our existing reports. Let's go ahead and have a look at our deposit slip as well. So at the top of the screen I'm going to type the word deposit but please note you can also favorite certain reports by clicking add or remove from favorites and pulling up your favorites category. Here's my deposit report under the favorites category. To run that, I'm going to double click it, put in today's date, and then click the OK button. Now you can see that we received one check from MetLife. Here's our check number, and it was for $82. The system will also give you the breakdown of how that was received. If we scroll down a little bit further, you are able to see that there was also a credit card payment accepted from George Clooney for $40 and that credit card payment has been fully applied to the patient's account. You can also see a total section at the bottom of your report. We do have a number of other reports in the system for you to explore, such as patient aging, 
insurance aging, procedures not found on a claim form, new patient reports, production and collection summaries, medical history update forms, claim status reports, appointment cards, appointment reminders, missed appointment lists, and so many more. I hope this demonstration has given you a great snapshot of what the Denimax program can do for you. And please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions you might have about how to use the system and what functions and features we're able to provide to you, as well as the great service that our team would love to give you. Thanks for watching.